My name is Steve Warren. I'm a professor at the University of Washington in Seattle. I spent the year of 1992 in Antarctica at the South Pole Station, carrying out several research projects that were related to climate processes, having to do with clouds, solar radiation, infrared radiation, snow chemistry, and snow temperatures. My students, Vaughn and Susan, came for the summer and showed me how to run their experiments. Then they went back to Seattle and left me to collect their data. Um, in February, the station closed for the winter, leaving just 22 of us in isolation for the next eight and a half months. We were living in four buildings enclosed under that geodesic dome in the background. Uh, the first blizzard of the winter came in March, causing blowing and drifting snow. So that got me interested in the crystal sizes because I'd been studying those in the winter. The reflection of sunlight by snow is determined by the size of snow grains. So during the summer, I'd been routinely using my Nikon camera with a bellows attachment to document the grain sizes. But when I tried to, tried to take pictures of the blowing snow crystals in this blizzard, I was surprised the crystals were too small to see, even with the bellows attachment. So I needed higher magnification. And it was the station physician, Betty Carlisle, who came to the rescue. She had a microscope with a gridded slide for counting blood cells, but everyone in the crew was healthy, so she had no need to count blood cells, and she lent me her equipment. And I then started, decided to start a new project, one that we had not proposed. I put Betty's microscope on a table in the unheated vestibule of her clinic, so it was at the ambient temperature, about minus 40 degrees, and um, crystals could stay cold while I photographed them. So every day when I went out to work for two hours at the clean air facility, I would set the microscope slide up on top of a box on the roof. And then two hours later, when I was ready to go back into the dome, I brought the slide with me and looked at it under the microscope. I was often astonished by the beauty of those microscopic crystals. It was totally unexpected because without the moon, without the microscope, all you see when you're outside is some sparkling in the moonlight. And you have no clue about the wondrous crystal shapes that may be responsible for the sparkling. Uh, and then the winter science technician also helped. And that was Jarvis Belin. He made a crucial discovery to get this project going. Um, he rummaged around in the station's dark room and he found an adapter that could attach my camera to an eyepiece or to replace an eyepiece on the microscope. So I was able to take pictures of the crystals. And Jarvis also developed one of my films while we were down there so I could know that the system was working. And I collected falling snow crystals for 100 days during the winter. So we ended up with 100 pictures and then the pictures had to be analyzed and that's where Von Walden comes in.